What better time than to address them than right now? Uh huh. So here we go. Yo, yo. Hey. Check me out. Hey. Let's have a conversation. What's up, Tea Timers? And I'm welcome to, to another episode of The Tea For Real with your boy Marcus J. Cook. Now, if this is your first time joining us, this is a show where each and every episode, I invite two people on the show with me, and we have social commentary about everything that's happening in the world. We're talking about everything from religion to politics to music to movies to celebrity gossip and more. And, of course, we got a little tea thrown in just for good measure. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you guys can know when we're uploading more content. Now, our guest today, <laughs> oh my goodness, they mm-hmm. are a couple from Birmingham, Alabama, who have decided to YouTube their marriage. Uh, QDR and Brittany Sudana is quickly becoming YouTube's favorite married couple on their new show called Suddenly Sudana. Brittany and Q, welcome to the show. Hello. Hey, 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 how, how we doing? How are you guys? Good. We're doing good, thanks for having us. Yeah. Good, good. Thank, thank you guys for being here. So, tea time, a quick, just a quick backstory. Brittany is my cousin, and Q is now my cousin in law. Uh, <laughs> the very first time that I met Q, uh, we were at a family function. Well, our, our entire family doesn't always really get together, but it was one of those times where magically we all were together. Our cousins from out of town was here, and we was like, let's just go to karaoke. You remember that? Yeah, uh, Upper Deck. That's right, Upper Deck. Yeah. So back then, Barack Obama was in office, and Barack and Michelle was like the pinnacle of black love. I see Britney walking up with this guy, and I'm like, oh, okay. Just the look in both their eyes, I was like, oh, my goodness. This is Barack and Michelle from Twitter. <laughs> I remember you saying that. <laughs> yeah. So I started calling Q Press, and I think that he, it was my first time meeting him and a couple of other people first time meeting him and our family, mm-hmm. and he went over big. Like, he scored big points with all of us, and uh, we have adored him since. So I'm so happy you guys are sitting down with me. Um, and I, I want to ask, ask a question. I want to ask, um, how long y'all been married, and what made you start your show, Suddenly Sedona? Well, I'll, I'll take this one because <laughs> it's funny. So we've been married now for three years. Um, but what made us start it is kind of funny. Um, funny little story. But I'll just give you the short version. So basically, it's always a pet peeve of mine for people to be like, oh, I hate Birmingham. I hate it here. Um, and they're always talking about the fact that there's nothing to do with Birmingham. And I told Q about it one time. We were having a conversation. And I'm like, you know, I don't know if it's because I'm from Birmingham. Like, it always just grinds my gears so bad. Um, and so we were like, you know, we we have a good time here. And wow. so it, initially, when the thought came up, it was to blog about just date night ideas, different things, because there's something for everybody to do, whether you're old, young, you know, you want to spend a lot of money, you don't want to spend no money at all. Like, there are a lot of things to do in Birmingham. And I feel like, I don't know if it's just not put out there, people are just not aware of the things that we have here, or, or what. But uh, go ahead. It's just, uh, I've noticed that a lot of people here that have those complaints need to be told what to do. Like, they're not going out to these different places. They don't, if something new opens up, they're not going to check it out. They're waiting on somebody else to go over that hill first and then tell them about it. Yeah. So it started off as that, like, well, let's just do date night ideas. And then, you know, we talked about it and we never will talk about it, then don't do it, then, you know. And then when the pandemic happened, I'm like, well, we at the house and we ain't doing nothing else. So right. why not just go ahead and start it? Well, of course, when we started it, it um there was no, nothing to do. We couldn't go out anywhere. <laughs> and there were, it was no date night stuff. So it then turned quickly into just a lifestyle vlog. I love it. And it's very entertaining. I love it. I know I saw an episode you. where you guys I know I saw an episode where you guys were talking about um getting another dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. Q, Q said he did not like Dalmatians because they look 
What did he say? The dimensions look, look uh, like pushovers. It looked like pushovers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need we need a dog with a with a uh, a more commanding presence. <laughs> that was so hilarious to me. So T timers, make sure you check out uh, Suddenly Sudana. It's on YouTube and. We also have a Facebook page, right? Suddenly yeah, Sudan. Same name and Instagram as well. Awesome. Tea Timers, you guys got to check it out. They are very entertaining. I love their relationship. I love how they bounce the energy off of each other. It's really uh, a good thing to see. So speaking of C, I want to ask both of you guys, what did you think of each other the very first time? Q, what did you think of Brittany the very first time you saw her? I, had to have I remember it was... I was probably in the 11th grade. Oh. Yeah, oh, it, it go back. It's, it's deep. It's deep. It goes back That's deep. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we had a lot of mutual friends. We used to be in the same circles, but I never knew who she was. And, you know, the stars just never lined up right for me. And, you know, I get to college, and, you know, I hear she's up there at UAH with a good friend of mine. So I'm like, man, you know, you got to run me some interference. I'm coming up there, what you going to be, man? I want them. And, but it just never lined up. And then, I don't know what, like several years later, I was hanging out with a buddy of mine. And I said, look, man, this girl, man, I think she back in Birmingham. Been trying to catch up with her. I'm, I'm going to try to get at her. Like, she's uh-huh. hanging out with a mutual friend of all of ours. So I said, look, man, I just need to find out what it's going to be. I'm pulling up. I'm going for it. I'm, and, and, and something I'm going to catch this time. Like, I got to, like, I had just been missing her this whole time. I was never in the same spot. Right. And the next day after that, she ended up reaching out to me on Instagram. And, yeah, that was it. I so, love it. He, Brittany. Yeah. Because Come on with it. <laughs> so he he loves to talk about how he's been woman since high school, blah, 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 blah. We always hear that, right? Well, he ain't never saying nothing. Like he said, we've always been around mutual people and been around the same circles. But I didn't even know he knew me, like for real. Like what? I remember one time when we were in college, like he was throwing parties at one point. We had came back to Birmingham um, on a weekday, like, like where I was supposed to be in Huntsville. Like, Came to Birmingham, came to one of his parties, and I remember he let us in, but yeah. I just thought he let us in because <laughs> we the homies. You let your homies in. You know, we done draw out of town. But um, so he always says that. But anyway, so when we fast forward to 2013, I noticed that he would always like my pictures and stuff on Instagram, but he wasn't saying nothing. So one time I told my friend, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to say something to him. And so I jumped in his. DM. No, that was, DM. Uh, they didn't have DMs on the gram at the time. You had to yeah. go back 52 weeks on the picture. Then. Yeah, so I went back to an old, old picture and commented and um, basically asked him about some recipe or something that he was cooking. And he never got back with me. And then he, we ended up exchanging email addresses. And then from email, we emailed for like, what, like two weeks. Yeah. And then he didn't ask me for my phone number. No. He did not ask me for my phone number. What happened? He, I got off early one Friday. So the email was done that day. He, he wanted to get up or something I like that. I hadn't got the personal email. So I, I, um, I, I sent him a message that Monday and I was like, you know what? So we don't have these issues anymore. Just go ahead and take my number and make sure you. <laughs> like, oh, so God. I've been running this. Well, <laughs> well, all was, I was where it is well, right? That's right, that's right. <laughs> so Q, let yeah. me ask you this question. When did you know Brittany was the one? Um, I think I knew in high school. Oh my god. I yes. may have known. Uh <laughs> but I was I was sure. Uh we had been dating a little while and um I think we hadn't we'd been out of town a few times and at that point really you know, I had been dating, but nothing had really lasted that long. Mm-hmm. And like, I would look for stuff like, you know, at this point, you know, I'm coming up on 30. I wouldn't like trying to get married that day, but I wouldn't waste my time either. And I really didn't want to waste anybody else's. So 
I was still enjoying it. It was still moving, you know, in a good direction. So I just said, why not? Like, this, everything else didn't work. This is working. This has to be it. Right, right. It just made sense. So, Brittany, what made you say yes? a thing of where I, I knew it was coming and I knew it was happening. Like, it wasn't a just say yes to the ring or, you know, once the proposal got here, I, like, I was just saying yes to that. Like, I had been said yes to the relationship as a whole, to right. being with him over the course of the time. So it wasn't like a, oh, well, this is the moment that I said yes. And this is the reason I said yes. Like, I had been saying yes. So I knew that when that time came, it wasn't going to be any type, it wasn't any other answer like I don't did you think I was gonna say no did you ever have that fear no no yeah I like I, I think we had had enough conversations and stuff to know like the next steps of our relationship and where we were going um that's so cool that's so cool thank you so listen tea time was Brittany and Q they're not just this model couple they are also politically and socially conscious and aware um, so I prepared just a couple of topics because that's what the show's about. Just a couple of topics with a couple of questions uh, about some hot topics that's going on right now that I want to ask you guys about. Are y'all ready for hot topics? Let's go. Let's go. All right. So first comes love, then comes entanglement, and <laughs> now you want to shoot me in my pinky toe. This <laughs> week, <laughs> this week, Megan Thee Stallion was shot in the after leaving a pool party hosted by Kylie Jenner in the Hollywood Hills. Now, it's, uh, it's been alluded that Tory Lanez, who allegedly shot Megan um, in the foot, uh, the entire situation is an ongoing investigation. At this moment, anything that we say is purely speculation. But I want to ask this. To Donna's, what do you speculate happened? I mean... Was Megan and Tory Lanez freaking and sneaking, or what? You want to go first? I mean, I got two theories on what happened. No, with Megan come on. All right, the first theory is, you know, it's been rumored that they've been fooling with each other. I don't know how true that is, because, you know, I, I just see stuff, and I don't see stuff. But <laughs> if they were dating, let's say they had a party, they hanging out, Meg the Stallion walk in, that's Meg Stallion. Tour lanes who? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some guys might have been like, hey, you know, what's up? You know, he only like 5'2 or something like that, so they're not respecting <laughs> him. So he probably was upset about that. Now, I don't know Meg the Stallion personally, but I don't think she would be out here just openly disrespecting somebody that she may or may not be seeing. But he may have had, you know, he may have been upset about that, pulled out a gun shot in the foot. If that's the case, Tory Lanez is the worst type of man there is. We yes. like, no violence against women. Now, I also think that it may have been a situation where, let's say an altercation happened in there with him and somebody, or with her and somebody, and he's a small person, and oh yeah, <laughs> I got a gun, and accidentally discharged and shot somebody that, you know, just from handling a gun wrong, you drunk, you trying to be a tough guy because you small and you want to pull a gun out. You know, I don't think it was a, 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 an intentional thing, but she did say that it was. So, I mean, we'll see, but I, I hope it wasn't a situation with him doing like a domestic violence type thing. Cause that's, that's, that's terrible. Like you, yeah, terrible. I like this music and I would hate, for that to be the case, because it's like, come on, man. Like, you, I can't even respect you, you know? So, that's right. Brittany, what do you think? I don't know. I, like, I don't know as far as too much on why it happened or what happened, but I just think that I don't know much about the little guy and, the, you know, the little fella. And this is what's going <laughs> to happen. This is, but see, this is what happens when you do stupid stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. now now people out here, they're going to attack. What do we know? We know you're short. And so we know you Ooh. might have this thing called short man syndrome. Yeah. So now, you don't weigh that much, neither. Yeah. So now you like, you're really not going to be respected out here. You already trying to 
it's one thing to hit on women, but you gonna shoot her and then in the foot, like in the foot. So you didn't even shoot her to, to hurt her for real. You wanted to hurt her, but you didn't want to hurt her, hurt her. Yeah. So you grown man built up like an arm, baby. That's how you <laughs> that's how you act sometimes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so listen, make is no snitch. When the police asked Megan what happened to her foot, she said she cut got cut by glass. Yeah, yeah, her she cut off some glass. So she's not a snitch. And police officers searched the car and they found this gun. Um, and Tory Lanez fessed up to the gun, said it was his. Um, now, if let's say this situation is one of those situations where it was a domestic violence issue, um, was Megan being loyal, too loyal, or was she being stupid? Stupid. 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 Or I ain't with it. <laughs> or, with. or she may, I mean, you know, she is out of H Town. She might know somebody who's gonna handle it to her liking better than the police will, you know. That's true. I didn't even think about that. I didn't, I didn't think about that either. Hey, yeah. see, look, that's why we need another point of view. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, you know. So <laughs> we're gonna move on for this because I got this game that I want to play with y'all, and I want to make sure we have enough time to play the game. So I'm just touching on the topics really quickly. So okay. from the young, from the young black and corn to the we ain't got no corn. Uh, <laughs> this week, <clears throat> excuse me, this week uh, there has been a slowdown in production because of the coronavirus. Um, of it's a corn shortage. Um, Kroger and Walmart, who are the largest, uh, the largest grocery store and the largest retailer in the world are now asking customers to either use their cards, pay exact change, or have the balance from their change sent to a, a loyalty card. Um, <laughs> but this is the first time in my lifetime that I have even saw a shortage on money. Like, money? Are you serious? Now, so Donna, some people are saying that some uh, people are saying that this is just a uh, a plot to go cashless, um, and they said that this is the sign of the end of the world. Now, <laughs> I want to know: Are you a conspiracy conspiracy theorist, or what's your take? What What do you guys take on the corn shortage, and if we're going cashless to, um, if we're going doing the corn shortage to go cashless? So, okay. I can be a con I love a good conspiracy. Uh huh. <laughs> I, I love a good conspiracy, but I don't think this is it. I think this is legit. We're running out. Um, I don't know how if they've been making coins because a lot of times people don't really use cash as much as we were using it 20, 30 years ago. Like that's just not a thing. Um, people don't have to go in it. There's just too many other ways around it. You don't have to go in the bank for anything. You can do a lot of stuff on Cash App, Apple, Apple Pay, you know. So a lot of people don't carry cash. So I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know if this is true or not. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's a situation where they just probably a few years back was like, hey, we need to halt making and producing more coins because nobody's using them. So there's no point. So I could see how if they weren't using them or making as much um, making as many coins, then there would be a shortage. Um, so I think it's, I just think it's just a simple, it's, a, it's I don't think it's the end of the world. I don't think we're about okay. to, we're going out of here like that. Um, I, I think it's a lot with, uh, what my wife was just saying as far as people moving away from using cash. Um, I've seen a lot of places that were open, especially around like week six of the uh, pandemic that were only using cards. So a lot of people weren't, you know, using like cash money to even get change to maybe make it to the next spot. And then you got stuff like, um, I was reading this a little while ago, uh, uh, places like laundromats and um, vending machines in places that were shut down due to COVID. Nobody's using those coins. So there's nobody, there's no coins to collect to put back into circulation. So I right. think it's probably a thing where, like you were saying, where people just not using cash, coupled with the fact that nobody was out to spend coins for them to collect. So I think it'll it'll balance itself out. I don't I don't think it's a 
a conspiracy. All right, awesome. Well, let me ask you guys this question. Did you did you ever think that in your your lifetime that you would see where there's a shortage on coin chain? No. No. I know that's <laughs> no. like it's unthinkable that's, to me. Yeah. Twenty twenty really pulled that off the tree. <laughs> it, it, <started. laughs> it, it definitely I did. I never even thought that I would see in my lifetime like this type of situation that we're in now with this pandemic and you know, we already went through recession. 0809, like I never right. thought that we would see like a for real, for real. Like this could potentially be sure, not gonna wood, but this is shaping up like the next Great Depression. Like I never thought that we would see something like that. So at this yeah, point, I'm just real, like, real, we out here. <laughs> yeah, it is yeah. something to think about. So I have a game. Now this game is called. Who did it? Now, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you guys questions about your relationship. You raise your hand. Eric, you raise your hand if this is if this belongs to you, okay? Now, if you both happen to raise your hand, uh, <laughs> if each, each person that raises their hand gets a point. Now, if you both raise your hands to a question, then you both lose a point. The person with the, end of, with the most points at the end of the game wins. All right, so you're going to ask a question, and if whoever does that, we raise our hand? Yeah. That's right. All right. And if you both happen to raise your hand, we lose a point. Yeah, we lose a point. Both lose a point. Okay. okay. <laughs> Who is the first to go to sleep? You? Okay. Oh, who takes the longest to get ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who's the best kisser? Oh. <laughs> oh, no, I'm killing you. <laughs> okay, so we're back at zero. <laughs> okay, who said I love you first? Brittany, okay. I felt it first. I've been doing it. I felt it first. <laughs> okay, um, who's better with money? Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't raise my hand. I, I thought about it. You know, I didn't raise my hand. Like you might be. If you, if you, okay. <laughs> Who has the most clothes? Clothes. Oh, yeah. Clothes. Okay. So Brittany's at two points now. Um, who controls the remote? Yeah. When I went to turn on a movie today, the remotes was under your pillow. And that's why I always get them from. Them. I always get them out from up under your pillow. That's not. That's because you go to sleep first. I'm, I'm up. I'm always up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who's the pettiest? What? Really? <laughs> Okay, who apologizes first? Oh, yeah. Well, listen, we got a winner, but <laughs> <laughs> since what's yours is his, and what's his is yours, I declare a tie. Right, <laughs> that's cool. I respect that. I respect ladies and gentlemen, the Sudanas, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for coming on the show. Now. Remember, Tea Timers, check out their show, Suddenly Sudana. Um, we can catch it on Facebook and on YouTube under the same name, Suddenly Sudana. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this video. Leave us a comment. Tell us how we're doing. Tell us some things that you like uh, and questions that you may want to ask Brittany and Q. Um, and as always, come back so you can find out what's the tea for real. I'm going to see you all next episode. Brittany and Q, thank y'all so much. Thank, thank you, you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank it's you. So much fun. Thank we appreciate you. it. Y'all. Yeah.